Good evening. Great to be back together tonight as we continue on our series looking at the idea of what is it to be a healthy church member. And as we, as we know, and as we'll mention several times throughout this lesson, we understand that being a member of the Lord's church is, there's one church, there's, there's one body. But we're also looking at the idea of the local congregation. And we pose the question in the introduct introduction uh, part of the series where we looked at what does a healthy congregation or local body of the Lord's church look like? And it's only, as we mentioned, as strong as the, the members within it. And, and so we look at, to answer that question, we have to ask the question, what does a healthy church member look like? What does a healthy member of a local body look like? And, and yes, we'll, we'll talk about both aspects, that, that to be a healthy member of the local body, you have to be a healthy member of the Lord's body. And so uh, as we talk about what we're talking about tonight, a healthy church member must be a committed member. And so we understand that, that this means we need to have a commitment to Christ. And, and ultimately, um, to be a Christian and to be a part of the one body of Christ, it takes a great commitment, doesn't it? It takes a commitment where Jesus says, you have to count the cost. You have to weigh out the decision of following Him. And he says it in this way, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him daily, which takes commitment. It says, I'm willing to commit my entire life. And we understand that, but we also understand the importance of, yes, it's about our relationship with Christ, but there is a great importance in our relationship with the body and with the local body. Because we see that within the local body, we come together and we gain that, we, we gain from one another, from others who are also committing their life, and we can encourage one another, and we can help one another uh, in the the goal of living like Christ. There's a very impactful sermon that I've, I've uh, used in lessons before. A sermon that I heard when I was, man, I, I'm, I must have been a teenager. I was at, in Burlington, Colorado. The minister there, Greg Smith, a great friend and mentor of mine, uh, preached a sermon entitled, Have to Get to want to. And the idea behind this sermon was the idea of I have to go to church. I have to, having this mindset of I have to go go to church, and which isn't necessarily a terrible mindset because we understand that God wants us to be a part of the assembly. God wants us to uh, meet together with one another and to worship Him and to take communion and do those things we do on Sunday morning. But if our only motivation is this obligatory, we will not have the kind of commitment that we need to have. And then, so he takes it a step further, and in this lesson he went through, he says we have to get from the have to to the get to. And that's realizing that the assembly, the local body, what we do here on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, uh, this family that we're able to be a part of here in Mobile, Alabama, is a privilege. It's a privilege that God gives us. It's a gift that God gives us. I love Ephesians chapter 4 uh, talking about the church as a gift and a, uh, a group of gifts. Talking about different parts of the body being given to us for our benefit. So that we can mature, so that we can grow, so that we can become more what Christ wants us to be. And so as this sermon went on, he says we have to go from that, I have to just out of this obligatory uh, obligation to God, to, man, it's a privilege I get to be here. And the more that we understand the privilege that we have and we understand the benefits that God has intended the local body in our assembling together to be, it's something that when we leave, it needs to get to the point that, that we miss it. We want to be there. It's this desired place because of how it helps us. And it goes even further from that, but not only what I gain from it, 
but what I can provide for it as well. And we're going to talk about that tonight because a healthy church member is committed to the local body, has made a commitment, and, and, and that commitment bears some responsibility. Some responsibility in our attitude and our mindset as we come together and assemble together is the body. And so we're going to talk about the importance of assembling together in a local congregation or being a, for lack of a better term, a member of this congregation. There's an importance in, in our being a part of a local body. As we talked about, we see and agree on the importance of a commitment to Christ, but we also see the importance throughout the New Testament on the importance of the commitment to a local congregation. Though the, though the labeled church membership is not found in the Bible under that title, the importance of identifying with a local body is found throughout the New Testament. Uh, one of the ways that we know that is if it weren't for identifying with the local body, several practices and commands that we find in the New Testament uh, would be lost. Uh, several of, of, of these commands would be lost, like church leadership. All the passages on eldership, when Paul instructs Timothy, when Paul instructs Titus to, to appoint leaders in the local congregation, to appoint this eldership, because we know within the Bible we do not see, a uh, as we may see in some of the, some of the other religious bodies in, in our world around us, we do not see a, a man headquarters. We do not see one who is in charge as a man. We see individual bodies congregations that have an eldership, a biblical eldership of, of men who are appointed by the congregation with these qualifications that we see in Timothy and also in Titus. Without the local body, those commands would be nothing. <laughs> Another we see is church discipline, something we don't like to talk a lot about, but something that is important. Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17 says, if your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, local body. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, ever whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. And the whole goal as you continue reading that context is for that individual to bring them back to Christ, bring them back to God. We see this played out in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the, the context there is this man who is with his father's wife. And Paul uh, instructs the congregation to to do what Jesus said and to apply this discipline for the purpose of what? To bring him back to God. And we get the impression, most commentators agree that in 2 Corinthians, that that has in fact taken place. But see, without the local body, where would that be? Uh, the idea of assembly, we see it all throughout the Bible. We see uh, Acts chapter 2, they were assembling together from the very beginning. Acts chapter 20, verse 7, On the first day of the week when they were gathered together to break bread, Paul began talking to them, intending to leave the next day. He's at a local place. He's at a, a, with a local congregation there. It says, And he prolonged his message until midnight. Uh, Hebrews 10, we'll come back to this uh, in a little bit. Hebrews 10, 24 through 26 talks about the assembling together. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together. And so all of these ideas, without the local congregation, they would be lost. What's the point of even having them as commandments? in the New Testament if it's not for the local congregation. And so we understand the importance of the local congregation and the importance of, of having that assembly and that, that family that we all are so thankful to be a part of. I really appreciated Flint's message on Wednesday night where he talked about how important this family here has been to him. And, and as Flint was sharing those things, he was sharing his understanding of how important the local congregation is. And in that, how important his commitment 
to the local congregation is and how important our commitment is as well. We see the importance of membership in a local congregation. We see the essence of identifying with the local congregation. And this is love. Love is the essence. So as we come together and as we see the local congregation, this is a place that we have to demonstrate to one another. As we see the command, we need to love one another. Love our brothers and sisters. Look at John chapter, um, John chapter 13. Verses 34 through 35. John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35. Let me get over there real quick. John 13, 34 through 35 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my, my disciples, if you have love for one another. And we've talked a lot about this before, is if there is not love in the congregations of the Lord's church, where can you find love? If, if people who are, who are experiencing all of the hate in the world and are looking for something different walk into a body of Christians and see the same displays of hatred and disputes and tension and, 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 and fights and quarreling, where's the hope? See, the church is called to be different. The church is called to be a place of love, a place where the love of Christ is demonstrated. And if we can't demonstrate it to one another, how would somebody in the world think we would ever possibly demonstrate it to them? The essence of the body is love. And what a great place to come. And, and as Flint was talking about Wednesday night, man, this is a place of love. And I'm thankful for that. A place where I can come in and know that I'm loved by the brothers and sisters. But also a place that because of that, we need to be committed to showing our love to others. So what does a committed member of the local body look like? What are some things that, that, that will help us to know as we get this idea or look at this idea of what is a healthy church member? Am I a healthy church member as it comes to being a committed, making that commitment to Christ but also in the local body? Let's, let's look at a few things that we see throughout the Bible of what it looks like to be a member of the local body who has made that commitment. Again, it's got to be not that obligatory, but that, that going from just a command to a privilege and a desire. Have to get to want to. But there's an importance in our attendance, in being together. Because if we're not together, we're not reaping the benefits that God has given us as a privilege. But also, we may be stealing the benefits that we are bringing for somebody else to gain those benefits as well. Hebrews 10, 24-25 mentioned it earlier. Let's read it. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. And so that's part of what it is that we come together and do is to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Can we worship God on our own? Uh, yes, I think we can. We, can. we can pray, we can sing, we can do all those things by ourselves. But God never intended for us to be by ourselves. He intended for us to be together. Now, I would say it'd be hard to take communion just because of the fact of what that word means. A common union, a community. It's an event of togetherness. And as we see even the example of Jesus, it was the last time He was together with His, his, his disciples before He died. But we see the importance of, of, of being here, being together. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assemblies together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We see the importance of that edification and that encouragement that we gain here and that we bring here as we come together. A committed member of the local body... It, it's, it's, yes, that attendance, but it's more than just the attendance. It's what are we bringing? What, what is our attitude as we attend? 
Because can we attend and can we take up a spot in one of these pews here with an attitude that's completely different from what God wants us to have? Probably happens. We've probably all been guilty of that from time to time. Maybe we're having a bad day. Maybe we're upset with something that, that, that we're seeing in the assembly or whatever that may be. And maybe we come with attitudes of bitterness or attitudes of, uh, of, of, of maybe even uh, problems with our brothers and sisters and those kind of things where we have these, these bad attitudes, these attitudes that do not reflect who we are or are to be as Christians. Uh, one of the things as we come together, what a committed member looks like, is one who seeks peace. And as we're committed to the local body, we need to be peace-seeking in the body of Christ. Because the body is to be a unified, working together group. Because we're stronger in numbers, aren't we? But if we're divided, we aren't going to be very strong. So we need to be peace-seeking. Look at Romans 14. Romans 14 verse 19 says, So then we pursue the things which make for peace in the building up of one another. And he says here, pursue peace. That needs to be a priority in your life, is to be at peace with your brothers and sisters. And this is in the middle of a context of, of an opinion. Uh, talking about opinions and how opinions can divide us. And Paul says, well, we may have different opinions, but it should never, our opinion should never come before seeking peace. We need to pursue peace. And sometimes we even give up of our own rights when it comes to matters of opinion. Now, we're not talking about the truths and the doctrine and those kind of things. We're talking about matters of opinion. Man, we got a lot of things going on in our church that could create some different opinions. I'm not going to mention those just in case I might ignite some of those opinions. But even within those opinions, we need to pursue peace. And I'm talking about things like remodeling and that kind of stuff. We need to pursue peace. We need to be at peace with one another. And sometimes that even means, hey, you know, my opinion isn't worth me dividing or being in a fight with someone that I need to be loving and I need to be showing that love and encouragement to as we assemble together. Another thing that, that we see a committed member of the local body looks like is one who edifies others. Encouragement is so important, and we all know the power of encouragement in our life. We've probably all received a card or a phone call or, or a hug or whatever it may be that's really encouraged us. And, and it really lifted our, lifted our spirit, brightened our day, helped us to continue carrying on. Maybe it changed our mood or our attitude because of the encouragement that we received from someone else. Well, that's, that's one of the main goals of the assembly is to encourage one another. And so we need to come. Uh, sometimes we, we come only thinking about how can I be encouraged? And if I'm not encouraged, I'm going to be mad. But we need to look at how can I encourage somebody else? How can I edify? How can I build up my brothers or sisters in this place? Look at Ephesians 4, 15 through 16. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. That we need to understand as we come here together, we have something to provide. God has given us, and, and I love how Flint talks about this. Flint talks about this all the time. God has given us all gifts. And they are different. And we all have talents. We all have gifts. We all have abilities. And God expects us to use those to edify and encourage and build up one another. And so we need to come, a committed member is one who comes and says, how can I be an encouragement to somebody else today? I don't know if I want to say this, but I think I'm going to. I've heard people before 
get upset when they've missed for some time and nobody has reached out to them. And I take, I mean, I take, I, I, I try to reach out. And we all, I know, we need to try to reach out when people are not here. But sometimes I wonder, maybe nobody noticed when we weren't here. And we automatically take that to say, well, they should have noticed. But maybe sometimes some self-reflection is, how, how come I was not noticed as being gone? Maybe that's because I'm not really noticed when I'm there. Because we all have something to bring, don't we? And when we're using that, when we're using that, man, I miss it. When, the, when in, those encouraging people are gone. Because I notice that encouragement that I receive on a weekly basis. And I'm not down in that. I'm not, I'm not talking bad about people that, that say that. I'm just saying we need to look at ourselves and say, what am I bringing what I need to to the body of Christ? Am I using those gifts and those abilities and that encouragement that God has given me to use? A committed member warns and admonishes others, speaking the truth in love. And that's that, that Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. Speak the truth in love. And I wrote an article on this recently on one of the messengers about how uh, that quote about brutally honest people sometimes like the brutality more than the honesty. And we have to be careful because sometimes we can, we can say, hey, well, I'm just honest. I, I'll just say it as I see it kind of a thing. And, and yes, we need to be honest. <laughs> but we need to be honest with Christian principles and attitudes. We need to be honest with kindness. We need to be honest with gentleness. We need to be honest with peace. We need to be honest with those qualities that we see we need to have as a Christian. We need to speak the truth and, and admonish. And, 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 and sometimes that's, as Flint was saying, uh, it's built on that relationship that we have. When, when we know somebody loves us, when they have to correct our behavior, we accept it because we know they love us and care for us. A committed member pursues reconciliation. Reconciliation, because we know, we know that we have differing opinions. We know that we have, we have different thoughts, we have different ideas, and, and we're different. And sometimes that can cause tension. Sometimes that can cause some, some disagreements and maybe even some fights. Matthew 5, 23-24 says, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. We need to have this reconciliation. We need to seek that reconciliation. Again, it's about that seeking peace. And if we have something, uh, uh, tension between us and a brother, we need to seek that reconciliation. And notice here, I know this is in, in some of the Old Testament language. This is, this is uh, while the law was still in place. And, but it, it carries the same idea as we talk about assembling together. If... if if you're about to go into worship and you have something against your brother, be reconciled. That's important to do right now before worship. Because that unity and that, that togetherness is so vital to all of our success spiritually in reaching the goal that we have together. Galatians 6, another thing that we see a committed member bears the burdens of one another. We have a responsibility in helping bear the load because we all see troubles. We all see times of, of difficulty in our walk with Christ. And it helps when we have somebody to help carry that load. Galatians 6 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. We understand that a committed member sees the importance of participating in the commands of worship. Things like singing, things like breaking bread and prayer and, and giving and those kind of things. And then we also see that a committed member adds, and we kind of talked about this already in Ephesians 4, but adds to the body with the gifts you have been given from God. 
Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8 says, Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And we all have different gifts. And and like I commented on what Flint said, we all have these different gifts. We all have these different abilities, and God expects us to use them. That's the parable of the talents. Don't hide your abilities. Don't hide your talents. Don't hide your gifts. But use them for His purpose. And we all have something to bring. And and part of this is is changing our mindset. We are living in a consumerism-driven society. Where everything's about, what can I get? What do I want? And sometimes we bring that into the assembly and say, what do I want to get out of the assembly? But we need to come with an attitude that says, man, it's a privilege to be here, and I have something to bring. What, what, what does God want me to give to the body to encourage my brothers and sisters while we're here? I hope as we look at these things, we can look at our lives and we can evaluate and say, am I a committed member? How is my health? How is my spiritual health as a member of this local body here at University Church of Christ? Am I bringing the things that God wants me to bring? Am I committed in the way that God wants me to be committed? Now we understand as we talked about that being a part of the church doesn't have anything to do with a building or even an assembly. We become a part of the church when God adds us to His one church. And that is at baptism. That's when we obey the gospel. That's when we die to our old selves. We repent of our sins, confess Jesus as Lord. We turn away from the world, turn to Him. We're buried in baptism and raised and added to the body of Christ. And that takes commitment. But the commitment doesn't end there. It only begins. That's when we we commit ourselves to God and to His body. Maybe tonight you're ready to become a member of the one church. You're ready to become a child of God. And you're ready to commit your life to Him. And we would love for you to be a part of this local body and bring the gifts that God will give you and has given you to be used to help to establish and grow and mature the members here at this place. If you have any need, won't you please reach out to us? Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to look tonight at this idea of being a healthy church member and being a committed member. We thank you for your word and your guidance, and and we pray that we can evaluate our lives and we can look at ourselves and, and ask those questions. Am I a healthy church member? Am I committed to the Lord's body? Am I one who has that desire to be here and to use the gifts that you have given us? We thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this body here. And we're so thankful for how this loving, very wonderful congregation that we're able to be a part of. We thank you for Jesus, and we know that it's through Him that this is possible. And it's through His name we pray. Amen.